Hey, thank you, thank you so much for that for the for the really kind introduction, and and I thank everybody for this for um for hanging in uh at this late hour for uh, um and um and listening to my presentation. Um, I'm gonna go over to slide two, and I just wanted to say a little bit about um, the kind of business uh, that that we're in, and I believe that that we're in a very unique business. Um, many vendors ask you to buy software or buy trading techniques that you cannot even see in, until after you buy them. Um, they come with back-tested strategies and entries without any mathematically quantified predictive value. And in fact, many uh, people present systems that are just, just plain broken. And the reason that they, they do that is they just don't understand the nature of the mathematics of the indicator. And to give you an, um, an example of that, Let's, let's look at a stochastic oscillator and Ranko bars. Now, in order to use a stochastic oscillator, or any oscillator for that matter, an oscillator can be relative strength, it can be the CCI, it can be stochastic. Um, all of them crunch numbers by looking at the relationship between the high of the bar uh, to the close of the bar, or the low of the bar to the close of the bar. You have to have those four parameters in order to generate an accurate oscillator line. But if you use a standard Renko chart, two of those um, parameters are missing. Let's take a look at um, a standard range chart. On a standard range chart, you can see that you, you can see the high of the move, the low of the move, the open of the move, and the close of the move. So the stochastic, the yellow line, is tracing out an accurate overbought, oversold um, a line. But if you look at the Renko charts, all you have is the high and the low of the move. There is no open and there is no close. So the whole stochastic, the oscillator itself, is tracing out an inaccurate number. There, this is not an overbought, oversold number. All it is is simply, is simply mimicking the contour of the Renko bars. And I've seen a number of systems which base their entries on a stochastic and a Renko chart. And those systems simply don't work. And all the person who, did, who developed it would, would have had to have done it in order to avoid this we simply better understand the nature of the, of the stochastic indicator. Now, there are basically two, two basic underlying strategies that software developers take when developing a program to define, to, to, to define market direction. Now, um, there's really a, a whole host of people who really believe in um, price action. Uh, they believe that um, uh, simply by looking at the formation of the market, whether it be uh, tick, time, or, um, or uh, range bars, that they can trigger a buy-sell recommendation with, with, with a positive predictive value um, significantly high enough uh, to provide you with a, um, uh, to make you profitable, to get you to your first target um, with, with, with a high enough um, percentage to drive you to profitability. There's another group of people who believe that indicator analysis or some unique composition of indicator signals, some confluence of indicator signals, are enough or provide you with the predictive value with, of significant strength to trigger a buy or a sell recommendation. And these are usually the buy on the blue dot, sell on the red dot systems. When, they're, when there's some Sometimes they're black box and sometimes they're not. Sometimes you understand how that blue dot's generated and sometimes you don't. Um, but they basically um, generate their buy-sell signals based on indicator analysis. Now, a further subdivision of both, the, of both the price action people and the indicator analysis people um, are those that trade one time frame and those that use higher time frames to confirm the validity of their entry. And I think all of us here in the room would agree that the more time frames that you can look at, uh, multiple higher time frames, the more valid 
the better the predictive value is uh, of your trading entry. The problem with looking at multiple time frames is that it's cumbersome, it's difficult, you need multiple windows. It's just very, it's just a very, very difficult thing to do. So we at Rightline kind of reject and, and actually embrace all of these hypotheses at the same time. We do not believe that price action provides anyone with, with uh, entries with a high enough predictive value um, to, uh, to drive you to become a profitable trader. There is definitely no confluence of any indicator signals on their own, any blue dot, red dot system uh, that is going to get you into a trade uh, with enough um, regularity, uh, with, the, with, with the kind of success you need, again, to, to trade profitably. Now, if either of these were true, markets could be robo-traded for millions in profits. If somebody could find some confluence with, of indicator signals, that's almost like this, you know, the, the search for the, for the golden fleece or for um, the fountain of youth. If there was some group of indicator signals that could trigger you then into the market, that would, that, would almost, that would give you a predictive value, say, close to 90% of getting you to a first target, um, that would be, that would be the, the holy grail. Um, everybody searches for it, and after dozens and dozens of years of looking, no one's been able to find it, and I don't believe anybody ever will because it does not exist. So what we've done, is, and, and a lot of the work that I've done is really based on Alexander Elder, who I kind of think is the father of, um, of indicator analysis. Um, he defined what's known as, as, the, um, as a triple screening method. And what we do is we combine market structure analysis indicator analysis, and fractal analysis. So our indicators actually do an assessment of market structure, which I think is 80% of the, um, of the skeleton or the backbone that goes into, into creating a, a successful trade. Uh, about 15% of that is, is confirmation of market structure with indicator analysis. And then I think it's extremely important using fractal analysis to confirm your entry on multiple time frames. Now, what we do is we have our indicators do this and combine it into a really simple trading platform in which all our entries have been optimized mathematically to, uh, to provide you with remarkably accurate trading entries. We know the sensitivity and specificity of each of our trading entries. And with the sensitivity and specificity, we're able to provide you with a positive and negative predictive value. That's really what you want to know. That is the bottom line for any trading entry. What is the positive predictive value of a signal when you take it? I.e., what, what, what is your, um, with what percentage is, are you going to get to your first target? 80% of the time, 70% of the time, 90% of the time. Now, a little bit about our methodology. We do not call tops or bottoms. I have never seen software that can accurately do that. And you see some of these markets where you know, the, the NASDAQ falls 100 points and the Dow falls 100 points, um, and the S&P 500 will fall 20 points. Uh, these people trying to call bottoms on these markets just get run over time and time again. So we don't try to call tops and bottoms. And I don't believe you can call tops or bottoms with, with the predictive value that you, that you need to trade successfully. Since we don't call tops or bottoms, we don't trade reversals. And we do not counter trend trade. And we do not try to predict breakouts. I think systems that are uh, based on um, um, predicting breakouts, which is like some move of the average true range of the market, get you into a lot of false breakouts and get you stopped out over and over again. What we are is we are ardent um, trend traders. We believe that institutional traders set the trend. We believe that's where the big money is, and we want to get on board with them. And it's our goal to define a trend early and get on board not only fast, but safely. Now, the thing is, if we go home with money at the end of every evening, 
we have to take it out of someone's pocket. Because uh, you know, we, we know that money isn't created or destroyed, it simply changes hands. Now, it's very, very unlikely that we're going to beat the institutional traders out of their money. And since the institutional traders are the ones that set the trend, what we're really looking for are the small traders, really people like you and I, who are trying to counter trend trade, trying to trade tops, trying to trade bottoms, that are getting caught on the wrong side of the market. And we want to exploit them. And these are the people that, that we want to lighten their wallets, uh, uh, essentially. And I'm going to show you exactly how we do it. Now first, let's take, let's take a look. This is simply um, a crude oil chart. This is an eight range chart. Now, people who um, believe that simply looking at market structure alone, looking at um, the candlesticks, that this would provide you enough information to allow you to trigger an entry with a high positive predictive value, say 80 to 90 percent. And I have not found that to be true. Um, you can see that this, can this green candle is engulfing this red candle. Um, potentially, that's a market bottom. You do get a reversal and a move to the upside. But I think on balance, just using market structure, look looking at candlestick patterns, is not going to provide you with enough, enough information to get you where you want to be. So what we do is we start defining market structure just a bit. When the market is above, the, now this is a 50 period simple moving average. It's nothing fancy. Um, you know, we use it, we use the Ninja, Pro, Ninja Trader platform exclusively, and this is just, this is really a non-proprietary indicator, even though we have formatted it so that when it's moving to the upside, it's green, and to the downside, it's red. Now, we believe that when the market is above it, bulls are in control, and we only go long. When the market is below it, we believe the bears are in control, and we only go short. So right here, that's our first trading rule. We go long above the 50 only, and we only go short below the 50. If we take this trade to the upside, below the 50, we consider that a counter trend trade. We consider that calling a bottom, and we don't do that. Then we've added we, what's known as our modified 15. Now, if you, if you overlay a 15 period simple moving average and a 15 period exponential moving average over this line, you'll see that they cross back and forth over each other. This is a proprietary trend line. And it, it really, really helps us trade. What we, because what we want to do is, as I mentioned earlier, we want to define a trend. And when the 50 is down and our modified 15 is down, that's what we can go short. When our 50 is up and our modified 15 is up, that's when we can go long. When the modified 15 is yellow, that defines chop. And that keeps us out of an enormous number of bad trades. You can see this whole move here on a yellow modified 15 is not tradable. And you can see how choppy the market is. This is untradeable market movement. And it's clearly defined by the yellow modified 15. Now, we um, add pivots. So we strongly, strongly believe that market turns are important when you come back to them. Now, if we get a trading entry into an unbroken pivot, we don't take it. And that's our rule. We don't trade into unbroken pivots. Now, since we don't call bottoms, we don't buy off of pivot lows, and we don't sell off of pivot highs either. Because I'm, way too many times I see this high pivot broken to the upside, broken to the upside, and we see people getting trapped over and over again trying to call a top. What we use the pivots for is if we have a signal into an unbroken pivot, we don't trade into it. Now, candlestick dogma tells us that you need two-thirds of a candle body close below a pivot to have the pivot break, and our pivots do that automatically. When two-thirds of the candle body closes below the pivots, this pivot stops tracing. 
Now, we also strongly believe in trading off support. Now, if you see this 7, this is on the forming candle. Remember, this is a range chart. So this is an 8 range. Now, we don't want to trade more than 4 ticks off the modified 15 or off the 50. So instead of leaving it up to you to try to guess where you are, this indicator actually tells you where you are. And you know that the open of the candle is 7 ticks off the modified 15. The reason this trade is a little bit dangerous to take is because you, you still have room to get a retracement back into the 15. We're not tight enough into the 15. And what we want to take are very, very conservative retracement trades. And those trades are taken right off support or right off resistance. Now, this is really kind of the heart of the system because we use order flow, stochastic direction, and momentum as defined by a MACD system, um, really as, as, our, as our indicator analysis. Now, line one of our three-line indicator assesses order flow. Line two assesses stochastic direction. And line three assesses momentum. It's, it's, it's simply defined by a MACD system. But as I mentioned, having this assess order flow stochastic and momentum on one time frame, I don't believe is, is, is uh, sufficient. We want indica our indicators to assess direction, or assess order flow, assess stochastic, and assess momentum on multiple time frames. And that's what this does. So let's take a, take, take a look at line number one. It looks at order flow. When the line is red, it tells you that order flow is down on all time frames that this that this indicator assesses. When the line is green, it's up on all time frames that the indicator assesses. When it's blue, it's up long term, and it's down short term. But since longer term time frames rule, you can trade long off of a blue um, line. When the line is orange, it's down short term, uh, down long term, and up short term. But again, since longer term time frames rule and it's down longer term, it's okay to take a short on an orange line. But assessing all these lines as we're trading is very cumbersome. So what we do is we project this information directly onto the price bars. You don't even have to look down at the three line in order to, in order to get the information that the uh, three line is, is able to provide to us as we trade. And, and, I'll, and I'll show you that very shortly. Now let's take a look at this setup. Remember, we are devout trend traders. We need the 50 to be green and the 15 to be green. You see this candle has a two-thirds candle break above the 50. And you see that it's outlined in blue. Now our indicators all assess, do an assessment intra-bar. So as this candle pushes up, you're going to see this blue outline form around the candle. The blue outline tells you that all three lines of the three-line indicator are green. They're telling you that multi on multiple time frames, order flow, stochastic, and momentum are with us on this trade. You put a buy stop limit order in one tick above the close of the candle. We, ha we have a range maker, which tells us where that close is going to be. And that's why I like to trade range bars, because you can tell where the close of a range bar is almost at the time that the range bar opens. So you put your buy stop limit in. You wait for the candle to close. It has to move one tick more because the top of the candles is an area of, of, of very weak support, breaks, and then up it goes. So not only are we trading with market structure, we've broken all resistance to the upside, we've broken the 50, we are also trend trading. The 50 and the 15 are up. We're also trading with indicator confirmation. Order flow, stochastic, and momentum are with us on multiple time frames to the upside. So we have the best of all three worlds. We've got fractal analysis. Simply our trading chart has made an assessment, a multi-time frame assessment. We've, we've carefully analyzed market structure. 
and we're trading with the trend. Here's the same trade to the downside. We break the 50 to the downside. We have no more support. And we want to take these trades, remember, within four ticks of either resistance or support, very tight to, to, the, to the 50. Um, we're trading again with the trend. The 50 is down. The modified 15 is down. The candle will be outlined in yellow. Intrabar, so you know that you're going to be trading with order flow stochastic and momentum to the downside. You set your buy stop limit order one tick below the close of the trigger candle. You're in, and down you go. Again, same trade, same theme. And you'll see it's a very, very easy system to learn. I mean, our entire library of uh, proprietary training videos is three hours because we only trade with the trend and we only trade with indicator confirmation. So it's, it's really a very easy system to understand. This time, instead of having a break of the 50, we have a break of the modified 15. And we're very tight to it. We want, we want to be very tight to support or resistance because we don't want the trade to retrace back up into the tr into the um, into uh, resistance to the upside. Um, that, but that break comes here with a candle that's outlined in yellow. If order flow stochastic and momentum with you to the downside, and bam, down we go for a short. Again, same thing. What we must have in our trades is we must have a confirmed trend. And the confirmed trend is the 50 and the modified 15. It's a very, very unique line. And it's actually composed of three separate lines, which is why you, can you will never be able to see one single moving average, whether it's an exponential or a simple, conform to the way that this line moves. You have a break of the 50, break of the 15, order flow stochastic and momentum, and there you go off to the upside. Now this is really one of our most powerful entries, and this is our C candle entry. Remember, one thing I told you that we want to do is we, we look to trap people in failed counter trend moves. And these are our most lucrative trades. And these are the ones that really work in all markets, all time frames. Right now, we have really bad volume on, uh, on gold and crude, on gold and the Russell that we trade. We also trade crude. Crude is, has better volume. The Russell's been really uniquely dead um, for, the, for the last few days. But these sea candle entries are, are, are remarkably powerful for a number of reasons. Now, the A, the B, and the C are traced out by the software. I didn't put them in. And you're going to see them appear on your chart um, as the indicators assess market structure. Now, remember, we cannot take a short unless the 50 and the 15 are both red. So the A prints when you get any two candles of the same color uh, appearing in sequence. So two red candles to find a downtrend, an A prints. The move continues to the downside. And then what you look for is somebody trying to turn the market. This, now, you can color the B candle anything you want. You can leave it blue, which is what, um, or green which is what the normal color of the candle is. I like to color it magenta. But when it closes, you get an audible beep. And what this is is what you have here is a bunch of buyers who have moved into the market, who have decided that the market has hit a bottom, and they're going to turn the market. But it's not done moving down. Um, they're caught. So what happens is on the next candle, you're going to get a C candle the C is going to flash to tell you that you have the potential here to engulf all the buyers in what is probably going to be a failed counter trend move. And then the C begins to form. Now, as soon as you know that there's a potential C here, now the 50's rolled, the 15's down. You put your sell stop in one tick below the close of the C candle. If it doesn't engulf and the trade doesn't mature, you simply cancel your order. If it does engulf and does mature, you're in. 
And what makes these trades so forceful and, and so successful is the fact that you have two forces pushing the move down. One is you have the addition of new sellers who come in to push the market, and the other is all the buyers caught in this fail counter trend move get stopped out. And what happens is you see a lot of these C candles, once they tick in and move one tick, they fly. Because what happens is you get this, all these, a lot of people in the B candle, their stop orders get triggered. And as soon as they do, they shove this market down. So the C candles are very, very powerful entries, and we look for these. Here's another C. Remember, we, in, order to, in order to take a short, we've got to be below the 50. We need the 50 and the 15 down. We have the market come down. These are all, these are all traders who have decided the market's hit a bottom, and they're going to try to turn it. Um, we are not looking to turn the market. We're looking for them to come in, and we're looking for a place to short it very, very conservatively. And we're going to short it one tick below uh, the close of the C. And this is a retracement into a confirmed trend. And if you'll notice also, the candle's outlined in pink. And that means that order flow and momentum are with us on this trade to the downside. So not only do we have a C engulfing candle, we, but, and so market structure strongly suggests that this is going to be a continuation short. You also have indicator confirmation of the short. That gives these, these entries a very, very high positive predictive value. Same trade. You want to take it right off the modified 15. Market comes down. These traders all try to counter trend trade, all try to turn the market. They get engulfed, and we're into the downside. And you can see at all, all these moves, here's the move down. Here's a green candle. All these buyers caught in the wrong direction. They get overrun two green candles. All these buyers caught in the wrong direction. They get overrun. There's another green candle. These buyers caught in the wrong direction. They get overrun. So you show me a system that can adequately call a top or a bottom, and I'll buy a beer. Because I don't see it happening. And we see every day people trying to turn the market at different points in a, in a down move or different points in an up move. And 80% of them get overrun. Overrun, 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 overrun. And then finally, buyers come in here, turn the market up a little, comes right back down. It's really, really a losing game to try to call a top or a bottom or try to counter trend trade. Now, here's a momentum entry, but it, this is all a variation of the same theme. We get a break of the 15, a retracement back. The candle's outlined in light blue. We have order flow and momentum with us. We have a retracement in a confirmed trend. We're in one tick above the close of the candle. Up we go. Retracement, if you have on a tight trailing stop, back. The X means that momentum is aligned on multiple additional time frames than the three line um, indicates. Uh, it's outlined in light blue, which occurs intra-bar. So you can get your, your, your buy stop limit order in before the close. And that's the one awesome advantage of trading range bars. When you trade ticker time, and this system works great on ticker time charts, um, and it also works fine on Renko, and it works fine in every market. And we have people who day trade it, swing trade it. Um, we have people trading daily charts, four-hour bars, eight-hour bars. But the one thing that I like about trading range bars is I can put my order in before the close of the bar. I don't have to guess. On a tick chart, you've got to wait for the bar to close, and, and you've got to find that entry. And occasionally, I have to take a tick or two of slippage. On a range chart, we have our orders in way, way in advance. And if we get ticked in, we don't have to deal with slippage. Because we have, on a buy stop limit, you can't, you, you, the market cannot give you slippage. This is a momentum entry again. Same thing, though. And you can see it's starting to be repetitive. 
and I want it to be repetitive. So I want you to see that uh, although the system uses a lot of different parameters, ultimately the trading system itself is not complex. And I believe that any good trading system should not be complex. We are simply trying to take advantage of traders who are trying to turn the market in, in, at inopportune times. And that's what happens here. We have a, a, a fall. We have a retracement to the modified 15. You see that these candles, th these buyers are not quite engulfed. This is not a C candle, but it's a momentum signal. And you're in one tick below the close, and down we go. Same thing again. Momentum entry, break in the 15, retracement back to the 15, momentum signal, and up we go. Now, I'm not defining for you areas for potential entries. I'm, gonna gi I'm giving you exact entries to the tick. And it's, it's really one thing to look at pivots and look at um, potential turns and to look at areas. We don't look at areas. We look at exact entries. Again, it's really the same thing. This is a power entry. It's a break, a retracement right into the 50. The 50's up and the 15's up, and up we go. We always trend trade. This is another pa two power signals. All based off of people trying to turn the market. Get the move down. Down, the retracement, no signal. Um, move up. Here we get a short signal, and down we go. I don't know how far we would go, because I don't know what your trailing stop is. I'll show you what all of our recommended, our recommended ATM strategy is. But here again is our retracement, right back into the modified 15, and down we go. All very, very conservative retracements right into support or resistance, a confirmation system generated signal, takes you in one tick below the close of the candle, and down we go on a conservative trend trade. Again, no counter trend trading, no tops, no bottoms. Here's a strategy entry. Each indicator has its own unique logic, but it's all based on our core system of market structure in which we need, we need uh, price to be above the 50 and above the 15. We need the 15 and the 50 green for a long. We let the market break above, and this is where the um, potential breakout systems are going to call you along. The market retraces. We take the conservative retracement, and up we go. All the people caught in this, okay, I've, we've decided the market's gone high enough, and we're going to turn it to the downside, are caught, and they get run over. We never want to be caught in this candle, because we and we're never going to be because we never counter trend trade. Again, same thing. This is a, this is a C candle entry, and it's a strategy entry. In this particular case, we have multiple signals allowing us to go long, and we're trading with order flow and momentum in both cases. Here's a break of the 50 and a break of the 15. This was a, this is a trade I took. It went 37 ticks. Just broke the 50, broke the 15. We were in one tick below, and down it went. When I scaled the trade, it was a 37 tick trade, and all it was was a trend trade. The 50 was down, the 15 was down. We broke all um, support. We traded with order flow, stochastic, and momentum with us. And remember again, this is a multi-time frame analysis and down we went. Now, we ha what we have done in, in, um, in our mathematical modeling is determine that um, oscillator analysis really doesn't add very much to the predictive value of a trade. If you look at the way some people trade the oscillator, let's say the oscillator is overbought. They believe that uh, an overbought oscillator tells you that the market is firmly in control, in control by bulls. So they continue to buy into an overbought market. Other people use, say, overbought divergence to call a top. So who's right? If, if an oscillator goes to the top and it's overbought, do you take, do you, um, do you 
take the philosophy that that's where it's time to look for um, for oscillator divergence and sell, or do you do you go with the people who tell you to continue to buy as each uh, pivot is broken to the upside? What we found is they're both right and they're both wrong. And that sometimes the market is going to continue to the upside, and sometimes the oscillator is going to confirm a turn. So what we did using mathematical modeling, looking at one year of market replay data, is determine what is the difference between the 50 and the 15 that creates an overbought or oversold market. And we have an indicator called the MA diff, which, and this is 12, which is 12 ticks. When the MA diff is greater than 18, we know the market is overbought, and I'm going to show that to you. If you see it in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the MA diff is 12. Now, that's reading the right edge always. Um, but you can see here on this entry, the MA diff is small. But as the space between the 50 and the 15 widens, the predictive value of the trades begin to fall. And when the MA diff is greater than 18, and we've defined this mathematically, it's not a number that we've dreamed up or a number that we think is accurate. It's what we found after, after, after looking at a year of market replay data. The eight, if you can t and the thing is, you have 10% discretion. You could trade an MA diff at 20 if it's a really perfect setup, but you know that you're taking on a little more risk and that the lowest risk trades are going to come when the MA diff is 18 or less. We also have um, the slope of the 15 and the slope of the 50 defined. I don't use those very much, uh, except in certain instances. Um, and they're, you know, they're, they're a little more complex. Listen, we know that the 50 um, defines momentum. If the 50 is hard to the downside and the slope is hard to the downside, it really tells you that um, um, the bears are in control. And when the market is hard to the upside, it's green and the slope is high. It really tells you that bulls are in control. So being able to look at the slope and objectively um, assess the actual slope really does help you. So we have it up there. And we also have volume. And volume just reads off the number of contracts. And when you see volume start to die, you know, you know it's, it's sort of time to, uh, to call it a day. Okay, now I've got to money management. Before I do that, I want to take you to the platform and show you our actual um, NinjaTrader platform. Let me see here if I can do this correctly. Um, is, can everybody see the NinjaTrader platform? Can you see that okay? Can somebody give, give me a yes if you can? Okay, great, great, great. Okay, let's take a look at... crude oil. Now here's a trade that we had today. We broke the 50 in the 15. We traced right back. Whoops, I'm sorry here. We had a strategy signal, and, sh and down we went. We're in one tick below, 23 ticks. This is a little more complex a trade. Our first target's five ticks. It went five ticks. You see, we never trade a yellow 15. Just, we just lay off of the market at that point. And they're going to be big moves you can't get. It's the one thing you have to understand. You could trade with sensitivity or trade with specificity. If you want to trade with sensitivity and try to get in on every big market move, you're going to get sucked into a lot of losers. If you want to trade with a tremendous amount of specificity, you have to pick your entries. And your entries have to align. And if they don't align, you just can't take them. Here's another trade. Let me take off some of this stuff here. 
But these were two trades that I took. And I could have taken three, but I'll tell you why I didn't take the third. There's the break. Retracement. And the move down. And this one went. One tick below the close. It went 11 ticks. Then it retraced back to here. Remember what I said, we don't trade into unbroken pivots? There was an unbroken pivot. Now the trade worked, but I didn't take the trade. What I did was, I waited for this retracement. And down we went. That went 12 ticks. I didn't scale it, didn't scale it too well. We got nine of the 12 because I closed the trade a little bit early. You can see the way I have it scaled there. But it went 12 ticks. And all we're doing is we're taking conservative retracements into a defined trend. This is exactly the same information that I showed you when I was explaining the system to you. The MA diff is small, the distance between the 50 and the 15. Um, we're letting the market break to the downside, we're waiting for the 50 and the 15 to turn red. Um, we're trapping all the traders in the B candle, trying to turn the market with the engulfing candle that we enter. We're trapping everyone in this candle. We didn't enter this because of the pivot. We're trapping everybody here in this candle with this candle. It's not a, it's not a, technically, it's not a C. But it does engulf, and, we're, and we're, these, these are the people we're looking to exploit. Then the market goes into consolidation here on a yellow 15. You get moves down, you get moves up, you get Cs, but we don't have any conservative entries, so we don't trade, and, and the system takes patience. There's another trade, and you're going to see these over and over again, and you're also going to see that they become monotonous. There's the retracement. Here's the break. The retracement. And down we go for 13. And you can see I'm not defining areas for you. Uh, I'm not defining potential entries. I'm giving you exact entries, and I'm scaling the trade to show you exactly how far it goes. Same thing here. You can see that these trades happen over and over and over again. The retracement, the break, the retracement, the move down. The move down, the retracement. Now, this was into a pivot. We couldn't take it. There's the entry. Now, if you got this trade on a 10-tick trailer, you got a 25-tick trade. Same thing here. Move to the upside, 18 ticks. Let me take this off, and I'll just show you the trade. I mean, you're going to get... I don't want you to leave, because I, I don't want you to get bored, but basically, it's the same pattern over and over again. We're looking for conservative retracements in a defined trend. And I've been uh, day trading for 10 years, and I have never seen a system more reliable or anything simpler to trade. And up we go. Here's the candle. That's an 18-tick trade. Now remember, we want to stay tight to the 15. These entries are potential entries on retracements, but they're too far off the 15. And we have an indicator that tells us there's the conservative entry. It's right off the 15. I took it in the trading room. We went 11 ticks. I waited for the retracement to come all the way back to support. It takes patience. And there's our break of the 50, break of the 15. I showed that to you. Order flow and momentum are with you to the downside. It kind of wiggled away, but that was a 38 tick trade.
Here's an eight tick trade. Break of the 50, break of the 15, 15's down, 50's down, plus eight. And let me just quickly show you the Russell. This was a break of the um, of the 50, uh, of the 15, 50, 50's green, 15's green. This one went seven. Here was a really nice trade. Got the move up. Got the retracement. And up we went. 13 ticks. Then we had a second entry right here that went 20 ticks. Again, move up. Retracement, entry, up 29 ticks. There's another one. I mean, I could really go on and on. I, 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 just, don't, I just don't want to get boring here. Now, in a, in a very, very rugged market, uh, let me show you a loser. Because the last time I gave a webinar, somebody said, well, do you have losers? And we definitely do. And I can, let me see if I can find you one. I'll show you a loser. I had it this morning, actually, and I know I'm I'm pretty sure it was on the Russell. Um, here it is, right here. Now the power entries are least power are, are least powerful entries, and I'll show you the entry. You have this move to the upside. You had this retracement right back into the 15. You had the power entry signal up. I went long right here. One tick above, and bam, the trade just collapsed. We didn't lose 21, but that trade was a loser. So every now and then, you don't get follow through. But there is a perfect retracement trade right into support. You're in one tick above, and that's as far as it went. It went just enough to get us ticked into the trade, and then just came right back down against us. So that was, there's, so there's a, there is a loser. Now, I want to go back to the slides. And... Let me just scroll forward here. Um, on a, we trade the Russell and we trade gold on a, fit, on a, on a 13 range candle. We use a 15 tick initial stop. We take two contracts off at first target of nine ticks one off at a second target of 15, and one contract off at a third target of 22. At the first target, the stop moves to nine ticks, uh, moves to break even, and becomes a nine tick trailer. That's our ATM for our, um, our 13 range. And that's how we calculate our net equity um, on a daily basis. Now, our net equity in the room through April, we don't have, I have not recalculated this through May and June, on four ca contracts um, with a $4,000 account, you'd be approaching $25,000. Percentage increase, up closing it on 600%. Profit, now we have an auto trader that I haven't even discussed, that does the same thing that I do in the trading room on a non-discretionary basis, 
Some people use the auto and the trading room and the software, and they trade them in separate accounts. The auto trader takes much fewer trades than I do. It's up less money, but it takes less trades. On, on the same size account, it's approaching $10,000 profit. It's also approaching 600%. But that's on a starting portfolio size of three thousand dollars because it only trades three contracts. It trades one less contract. So, ba so basically, I'm you know I'm going to I'm going to finish a lot earlier, um, which early because which is which is good because it's late. I know everybody's tired. So really, what do you need? What do you need to become a, a professional day trader? And what you do is you need outstanding software that's going to do ninety percent of the heavy lifting, and really. All of us in this trading room have to have to outfight the smartest people in the world and the richest people in the world, the institutional traders. Um, they have very sophisticated trading systems, and they got a lot of money. And I and for many, many, many um, months, I used to follow the tape, and I used to see them bang those trades across, um, 25, 25, 25, 50, 50, 50, 50. I mean, when they wanted to push the Russell up, they would just bang those buys. Uh, trades across. Same thing with crude oil. 25, 25, 50, 50, 50. These are executed trades crossing the tape. These are the guys that create the trend. And these are the guys we can't beat. But we have to take the money out of the hands of traders. And you really can only do this with software that provides you with a really, really good edge. Now before I get into this, I'm going to again shut the slides off and show you I think something that's really pretty neat probably something that you've never seen before now in the trading room we have a direct entry system now you know in a lot of trading rooms they will call a trade and sometimes they're called late sometimes they're called retrospectively what we do is we have our own superdome now here is the Ninja Trader Superdome. So let's say I call a sell order. I'm going to put, and I put the sell order in here. You see, it just appeared on the Superdome. So if you give me or authorize me to take this kind of control, I will put the orders in for you. And we have a lot of people on this direct entry system. And let's say the system, let's say I decide that I want to cancel the trade. I hit close. Let's say I want to take a buy. Here, a buy stop, a buy stop limit order. Appeared right here on my Superdome. If I want to cancel it, I hit close. Let's say I want to move the trade to break even. I right click here and I hit the break even. And your stop fires to break even. Now unfortunately the market's moving so slow. Let me actually see. Oh, geez. Let me see if I can get this to actually execute a trade. Okay, it just filled. Now we're in the trade. Now let's see what's going. Let, let's see if it'll move. You can see our first stop on an eight range. Um, two off at five. Two off at ten. Now I don't think I don't think this is this is the. the I don't think the market's going to move here for us. It may take a week for it to move. But let's say I want to, let's, I just want you to see, let's say I want to move the stop to break even. I hit this, boom, stops now at break even, trade's closed. So I have a lot of control over your Superdome, and this is our direct entry system. And I don't know if, you know, it's, this is a really, really um, unique piece of software, and I think it makes our trading room um, different than any other trading room there is. I mean, it's all, it's up to you as to how much power you want to give me, but um, I can actually take control of your Superdome for you, get you into the trades, and manage them for you if you wish me to. Now, we really obviously strongly believe in education. Um, even though our trading rules are very, very, very uh, stringently defined, 10% of trading is discretionary. 
and we provide you with extensive videos, group and personal mentorship support programs. We really, really do strongly support our software. Now, the thing that I've never understood is you buy a piece of software and then six months later you're asked to pay for a boot camp. But we don't do that. I mean, when you buy our software, if we run a boot camp, we're going we're gonna to bring you into the boot camp for free because we should provide you with all the educational material that you need to trade profitably right up front, not ask you to pay for additional boot camps down the line. We don't ask you to pay for any additional seminars or lectures. And the biggest thing that I see a lot of other software vendors do is they create a new indicator package and then they charge you for it. A pro version is a $999 upgrade. We've done an innumerable number of sophisticated upgrades and we always give those upgrades out for free. And we, that is, and we do that for life. And we believe that you're part of our trading family. And what we really want to do is we want to drive you to profitability. Now, we also have an auto trader. Uh, it's the same thing. If, if, if you lease our auto, auto trader, we always provide you with, um, with updates uh, free of charge. Now, here's our special offer. Um, the right, normally, we do not sell the direct entry system. Um, but as part of the webinar special, uh, the right line trading order flow software and direct entry software, plus our video tutorials, plus two hours of personal mentorship, and one month in the live training room is $2,999. Now, we, we encourage everybody to come into our training room. Um, I'm going to show you the, uh, the um, URL, watch us trade. Um, also, if you go to our website, you can sign up for our free newsletter. Now, normally, our prices are $249 a month to lease our trading room. It's $349 for our auto trader. And the trading room and direct entry system are $399. Um, that's the webinar special. Uh, it really is you, you, um, uniquely inexpensive. Now, we, 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 don't, we, we encourage you to come into the trading room. Now, if you go to www.rightlinetrading.com, you will see the link to sign up for a free trial in our room. And we'll provide you with a username and password, and you're in. You can email us at info at rightlinetrading.com anytime. And myself, I'm Mark. We have tech support here. We really have heavy-duty tech support. You can call us anytime at 855-765-6681. We are eminently accessible, and we get a million phone calls. So we're around and we support our stuff and we're always upgrading it and trying to make it better for you. So I'm really done with my presentation so I, I, I'm just going to look and take, and take a look at um, um, some of the questions. Let me just scroll back here. Okay. We do, um, Terry asks, um, how do you determine targets? Terry, we basically determine them by looking at a year of market replay data. We really do play around with our ATM strategy ad infinitum. On an eight range right now, we take two of our four contracts off at five, move to break even, run on a five tick trailer, and take two of our uh, contracts off at 10. On a five tick trailer, the trade would have to go more than 15 ticks in order to monetize the trade better than that, and it's, it's unlikely on an eight range. Most eight range trades go be about 12 to 13 ticks. So if you take two off at five and two off at 10, walk away with 300 bucks on a risk of 400. It's really, really a conservative way to take the, tra to take the trade. Remember, on your first target of plus five, two contracts are off, you got $100 in the bank and you're in the trade for no risk. And uh, Shiva, the, the, the typical risk reward, let me tell you the thing about risk reward that most people, that a lot of people don't understand. Risk reward is not just determined by the amount of money you could, you could win or lose on an entry. It's determined by the predictive value of the entry. Let's say that, uh, let's say that system A will give you 65 to 70% of your entries 
um, will provide you with a first target on 65 to 70 percent of your entries. Well, that provides you with, with X risk reward. But if a system can give you a 90 percent generated predictive value, your risk reward is, is obviously much, much less because you're going to only lose 10 percent of your trades. And in addition, on the 10 tick trailer that we use on the 8 range, we exit on what's called a reversal candle. We try to get out before we take that 10 tick hit. So the risk to reward is valuable and really determined by the predictive value of your trading entry. Um, David asks, please explain range bars, ticks versus candles. or um, tick, tick bars, Dave, um, you would set, let's say, a 377 tick. You're going to generate a, a candle every time the market moves a tick. A tick is the smallest unit uh, it can move. Um, and when it moves 377 ticks, it forms a bar. Um, obviously, a time every four hours, every two hours, every two minutes, it's going to form a bar. The problem is you don't know exactly where the candle is going to close until it does on a range bar. It has to move eight ticks from the open in order to form a new bar. We have a range maker which tells you exactly where that's going to be before the bar forms. So if you like the setup, you're going to be able to take a buy stop limit or a sell stop limit order before the close of the candle. That's unique to range bars. And that's really, really why I like them so much. It's different than any other type of bar. Well, you know what, David? That's a great question. David asks if you have a whole... I don't know if other people can see the questions, but David asks if you have a whole bunch of people that are entering orders at the same price, is there actually enough liquidity that most get filled? And the answer to the question is, David, I don't know. Um, we are going, we're going to, at some point in time, shut down the direct entry system. Because a direct entry system puts everybody in the order at exactly the same tick. So obviously, if we have 50 people on the system and they're all trading four contracts, that's 200 people, 200 contracts sitting at that buy stop limit level that needs to be that needs to be sucked up by 200 sell contracts. Now in the summertime, I'll tell you on the Russell, I think occasionally that can pose a problem. Um, I don't think it does on crude, and I think occasionally it can pose a, uh, pose a problem on gold. So, so that's why on the direct entry system, we give you two options. You can take a buy stop limit order, or you can take a buy stop order. A stop order will allow you to assume uh, a certain amount of slippage. So if you don't get your exact entry because of a problem with liquidity, you can still get into the market and still get the trade. But that's a really good question. They're not available, Alan, for TradeStation. They're only available for Ninja. I'm sorry. Uh, we're not, uh, uh, Pawn, I, I think the TOS, is that TradeStation? It's not available uh, for TradeStation. I'm sorry. The difference be between the auto and, and direct entry is the auto trader you turn on no thinkorswim it's not we're going to work on on enabling it for other platforms but we've done so much with the auto trader the direct entry system and we work so hard to upgrade it we really haven't moved to other platforms i like thinkorswim i like sierra i like tradestation they're platforms we're going to move to we just haven't been able to do so yet um the the auto trader SOF is completely independent. You turn it on in the morning and you leave it alone. And it trades. Um, the direct entry system, you really, I recommend um, you watch and you trade along. Because how much authority you want to give me, it's, it's, I consider it to be uh, a, a, an easier type of discretionary system. If you're in the trading room, and the reason we developed a direct entry system is, I mean, the, the most common complaint is you call out an entry and somebody doesn't hear you. Or you call out an entry and somebody puts it in late. 
or you call out an entry and somebody doesn't put it in. Well, we use the direct entry system so that when I call out the entry, I also put it in your Ninja Trader. So it, I put it in your Superdome. So it's really discretionary trading. Now that can be the full extent of all the authority that you give me on the direct entry system. The, because the trade is going to evolve based totally on your own ATM strategy. We recommend an ATM strategy for you, but the, the ATM strategy that it takes is based on what you want it to take. The auto trader, we preset the ATM. You have no discretion whatsoever on the auto trader. And, that, and there's the huge difference. And what you have to do with the auto, just to, just to finish really quickly, is you don't want to let the auto trader run during big news. Let's say that there's going to be a crude inventory report at 10, at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Well, you can program the auto to go on and off the night before. So you look at Forex Factory, you see on Wednesday is crude inventory at 10.30 uh, a.m. Eastern. You program the auto to go off at 10.25 and, go, and to go back on at 10.40. So that's the only, other than that, the auto trader is left totally alone. So the size account really depends upon how many contracts you want to trade. I mean, I, you can trade as many as you like, but I do not recommend you trade fewer than two contracts. People ask me all the time if they can trade one. I don't think you can make money with one contract. I think you have to trade two. If you trade two and take one off a of target one and one off a of target two, you can scale and you can make money and you can be profitable. Um, and also the margin size depends upon which, which broker you use. I know I think margins have, have increased. Um, and it also depends on what markets. The Russell margins are small. If you only have a, a small amount of money, you may want to limit yourself to one market. Uh, I think gold margins are still pretty small. I think the crude margins increased. And I think it's about $1,500 a contract. So I think to trade two contracts, you need about $3,000. Absolutely, Amani. The, um, you, can, you can come into the trading room for $249 a month. I want you to come in for free right now. I mean, if, if, if you go to the website, in fact, what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to drop the username and password requirements. You don't even have to sign up. Um, we're going to send out a link early in the morning. Um, and, well, if you don't get the link, you can, just, you can access the website right on www.rightlinetrading.com. Thank, thank you, Yana, for putting that up. Just come in, and you're welcome in the room. So the trial goes for three days, Manny. We want you to see how our system works. And I think um, from trading three days, you're going to get a really, really good idea of whether you like our system, you think it's profitable, and you think it's as valid as I believe it is. So if you come in tomorrow, you'll be in there for Friday, you'll be in there for Monday, you'll be in there for Tuesday. And you know, uh, I'm, I, 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 really, I, I really believe that's going to really, really nail it down for you. Um, are there any other questions? OK, well, listen, I really, really appreciate it. It's really late, and I appreciate everybody giving me your time. Uh, um, we, you know, the room starts at 8.45 Eastern. Um, and we really have, we, and we really have a nice, you know, we have a three and out rule. If we get our, if we get three wins early in the morning, we close. I mean, we don't push it, especially in the August markets. Um, if we can get about five hundred dollars in net equity in the room, we're going to close. We're going to stop trading. We're not going to continue to take risk. So, if 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 we have to work for our money, we'll trade all the way till noon time. So, listen, I really thank Yana. And I, th I thank everyone at, um, at Trading Pub for giving me this time. I really, really appreciate it. And I thank everybody in the room. And I hope to see everybody in that room tomorrow. Um, thank you very much, Yana. And uh, 